straight toward our proximity. Maybe you should give him the clamps, clamps. Gee, you think? You think that maybe I should use these clamps that I use every day at every opportunity? You're a freaking genius, you idiot! There's a lot of 3D printed clamp designs out there. Some are better than others. This one's pretty good. The goal of 3D printed part design is functionality, as in the part should function in the way it is intended to, followed by sturdiness, where the part should have a yield strength higher than its design strength, followed by printability, where the part should not require open heart surgery and a day at the spa in order to get its lazy ass off of my printer, followed by optimal usage of filament, because using filament is more expensive than not using filament. And so, considering that the best design for a simple, say, C-clamp that I can find on Thingiverse has, in descending order of upsetting me, what looks like a badly catted buttress thread form, or, God forbid, a sharp V thread form, which was, quote, only used occasionally in an exclusive 60-degree specification, which it is not here, back in 1978, and then it has a super bad stress concentration and a critically load-bearing corner, which is begging to start propagating a crack. It has fillets on every convex edge, which will make for ludicrous and radically bad overhangs at large print scales, or require the use of support material, which both wastes time, filament, and requires a hand finish. And finally, it's a solid monolithic structure, which relies almost completely on the number of shells to govern all of its strength, and not as much its infill if you're smart about it, but you'll understand that soon, which wastes a crap ton of material and means that whether or not it is good at its job or bad at its job is up to the whims of whoever is printing it. I'll start from scratch here. A clamp is basically two-dimensional and it looks like this. When you apply the loads and perform cuts to its structure, you see that it's basically two cantilevers connected to a pin-pin beam with strain relief and a net moment load. This means that almost all of the loads that the clamp undergoes are really most akin to bending loads, and if one shape resists bending loads better than all others, it is an I-beam. And if you look at this micrometer, which is really just an expensive, well-made, and well-labeled screw clamp whose job is to not bend, and you cut it in half along the part of the highest bending moment, which, spoiler alert, is the part where it's thickest, you see it's essentially an I-beam. Alternatively, if you choose to just Google what a C-clamp is supposed to look like, you can also see that it's probably not like this. So therefore, I'm just going to make a clamp that's shaped like an I-beam. Then I'll realize I can't print that because it would require a ton of support material. It's okay, though. I can always just cut it in half, stick it onto the other side, and have it be the same thing as long as I prevent buckling in the two thinner walled sections and hold it together somehow. If only I could find some 3D printed nuts and bolts that don't suck. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> Here it is. It's a lot stronger than I thought it was going to be, and I had pretty high expectations. It's held together by three of these fasteners right here, and the interesting, the most interesting thing about this design in particular is that because there's a seam along the middle, all of the force when you pull down on this is converted into a wedging force that basically, that mostly tries to split with hoop stress this ring apart, and the Weakest link is clearly trying to separate these two halves rather than to separate layers if it was like that or if it was printed like that and Because the weakest link is or in terms of strain and stress and work at work energy principles and whatnot All of the force is absorbed in the tension of this nut and bolt right here Which is what it's designed to take up. So this is a lot stronger I can crank on this thing a lot more than I thought I was going to be able to and before there's any other comments, a friend of mine asked me this question. Why don't you let me, why don't I let you put a wrench around this end of it? In short, it's because if you're hand tightening this bolt, I did the calculation on how strong the human hand is and how much torque you would need to put on this thing as a function of the lever arm in order for you to be able to exceed the yield strength of the material. So that was like three equations, and this is absolutely no... If this was any longer, a person would be able to break it by putting it together. But they can't. So in this case, hand tight is always right. Hand tight is always right. I'm really happy with that. But anyway, yeah. Tell me what you think. Download it, print it, play around with it. And uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. Thanks for watching.